Is vinegar good for you? Well, vinegar is one stage before alcohol. And Dr. Robert Young has recently done a very good presentation on vinegar. And he shows that vinegar is acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is a neurotoxin. Vinegar is a liquid composed mainly of acetic acid and water produced through fermentation. The process begins with the fermentation of sugars, typically from fruits like apples or grapes or grains like rice. The sugars are converted into ethanol, alcohol, by yeast, and then a second fermentation process occurs where bacteria convert the alcohol into acetic acid. The final product, vinegar, contains about 4 to 8% acetic acid along with traces of other compounds such as vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. Common varieties include white vinegar, apple cider vinegar, balsamic vinegar, and rice vinegar, each with its unique flavor profile and application. Although vinegar has been used for thousands of years to preserve foods and add flavor, its health effects, especially when ingested, have been closely scrutinized. Therefore, in today's video, we will delve deeper into the science of vinegar, its benefits, and the potential risks associated with its consumption, revealed by Dr. Barbara O'Neill. And there are five ways we can be exposed to acetaldehyde. One is vinegar. Another is drinking alcohol. Another is when a person has a yeast presence in their body and they're eating a lot of sugar, even a lot of fruit. Then as the yeast feeds on the sugar in the fruit, it gives off acetic acid, lactic acid, uric acid, and alcohol. And that alcohol breaks down to acetaldehyde. Barbara O'Neill, a well-known figure in the natural health community, has a controversial opinion about vinegar. According to her, Dr. Robert Young revealed that vinegar contains a compound called acetaldehyde, which is a neurotoxin. Acetaldehyde is a byproduct of alcohol metabolism in the body, and Dr. Barbara O'Neill warns that it can accumulate and cause damage, especially to the brain. Acetaldehyde is indeed a compound that occurs naturally in the body during the metabolism of alcohol. However, it can also be introduced through certain external sources like vinegar, alcoholic beverages, and even environmental exposure. Acetaldehyde is classified as a potential carcinogen, and in high levels, it can cause oxidative stress, inflammation, and damage to various tissues, including the brain. The fourth place that you can be exposed to vinegar will be in car fumes. The fifth place is cigarette smoke. So I don't advocate using vinegar. Some people say, well, I eat vinegar and I have no apparent brain damage because it's supposed to be a neurotoxin. Well, I guess to really see the damage and to have damage that was obvious, you would have to drink probably a couple of litres of it a day. And so most people that take vinegar only take it in small amounts. Dr. Barbara O'Neill asserts that frequent exposure to acetaldehyde, either through consuming alcohol or vinegar, can lead to brain damage. She explained that acetaldehyde disrupts neurotransmission, leading to cognitive decline and even neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's disease. In this context, vinegar consumption could exacerbate problems related to yeast overgrowth, leading to symptoms such as brain fog, fatigue, and headaches, all of which may be associated with acetaldehyde toxicity. Personally, I prefer to use lemon. We serve some very nice dressings at Misty Mountain Health Retreat, also at the retreats here in, in the US. And we always use lemon. Lemon gives a lovely flavor. Lemon is a tonic to the liver. The lemon is an internal alkalizer. But not only that, the lemon is acid where it should be, which is in your stomach. So the lemon is also a digestive aid. But when it breaks down in the gastrointestinal tract, and the minerals are released, those minerals are alkaline minerals, so it alkalizes the tissues. The alkaline minerals are sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and iron. So the humble lemon is acid where it should be and alkaline where it should be. There is a place that we do use vinegar. Because of these potential risks, Dr. Barbara O'Neill strongly discourages the intake of vinegar, particularly for those concerned about cognitive health. 
Instead, she advocates for the use of lemon juice as a safer and healthier alternative. Lemon juice, she argues, offers many of the same benefits as vinegar, such as being a digestive aid and alkalizing the body, without the associated risks of acetaldehyde exposure. Lemon juice is rich in vitamin C, antioxidants, and citric acid, which support the immune system, aid digestion, and promote overall health. Lemon juice helps to balance the body's pH levels, promotes hydration, and can even act as a natural detoxifier. By replacing vinegar with lemon juice in daily routines, individuals can reap similar benefits without the potential dangers. We use the white vinegar for cleaning. Bleach will kill mold, but it will feed fungus, whereas vinegar will cool mold and will kill fungus. So vinegar is an excellent cleaner. Some people have said to me, but it doesn't leave a nice scent in your bathroom. Well, after you've cleaned it with the vinegar, then you can wipe your bathroom down with some essential oils like lavender or eucalyptus, or we have one in Australia called lemon myrtle essential oil. That gives a lovely, slightly lemony, a lemony odor. Despite her warnings about ingesting vinegar, Dr. Barbara O'Neill acknowledges that it is an excellent cleaner for household purposes. The acetic acid in vinegar has antibacterial properties, making it effective for disinfecting surfaces, cutting through grease, and eliminating odors. Dr. Barbara O'Neill herself uses white vinegar for cleaning purposes. Its acidic nature makes it effective against common household germs, and it can be safely used on a variety of surfaces, including countertops, bathroom tiles, and glass. However, the strong smell of vinegar can be off-putting, which is why Dr. Barbara O'Neill recommends pairing it with essential oils such as lavender or eucalyptus. After cleaning with vinegar, a few drops of these essential oils can be wiped over surfaces to leave behind a fresh, pleasant scent. There is another place on the body that you can use vinegar, and that is for tinea or athlete's foot. Soaking the toes in a little bowl of tinea or athlete's foot can help to resolve that problem. In addition to its household uses, Dr. Barbara O'Neill highlights the benefits of vinegar for treating certain fungal infections particularly athlete's foot and toenail fungus. These conditions are caused by fungal overgrowth, and vinegar's antifungal properties can help combat them effectively. Athlete's foot is a common fungal infection that affects the skin of the feet, often leading to itching, scaling, and redness. Barbara O'Neill recommends soaking the feet in a mixture of vinegar and water for about 10 minutes daily to help treat the infection. Vinegar's acidic nature creates an environment that is hostile to the fungus, thus promoting healing. It can also help to resolve uh, fungal toenails. With fungal toenails, soak the toes in the vinegar, and then after maybe a 10 minute soak, then you can put a drop of the essential oils on the toenail that are known to be strong fungal killers, and that would be oregano oil, or thyme oil, or tea tree oil. For fungal toenails, Barbara O'Neill suggests soaking the toes in a vinegar solution for 10 minutes, followed by applying essential oils like tea tree oil or oregano oil. These oils have antifungal properties that can help kill the fungus and restore nail health. Regular soaks in vinegar, combined with the application of essential oils, can be an effective natural remedy for this stubborn condition. The debate about whether vinegar is beneficial or harmful comes down to balancing its various uses with potential health risks. While Dr. Barbara O'Neill's concerns about acetaldehyde and its neurotoxic effects are worth considering, vinegar has well-established benefits, especially when used externally or in moderation. Despite Dr. Barbara O'Neill's caution, some research supports the health benefits of vinegar. For example, Apple cider vinegar is often touted for its ability to help regulate blood sugar levels, improve digestion, and even aid in weight loss. The acetic acid in vinegar can improve insulin sensitivity, making it beneficial for individuals with type 2 diabetes. Additionally, vinegar can promote satiety, helping people feel full and reduce their calorie intake. If you're enjoying this video and finding the content helpful, make sure to like and hit subscribe button below. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update on health tips and more.